E, merhaba arkadaşlar. E, seminerimize şu anda katılmış olan arkadaşlarımız var ise eğer tam zamanını bekliyoruz. 11.30'da başlayacağız. Teşekkür ediyorum hepinize. Hello everyone. Good morning. So thanks for joining in our webinar on this very topical subject. So I'm your host for the day. I'm Ruturaj Patil. I'm a product manager for Liquid Products line uh, with a global animal nutrition company, EW Nutrition. And presently I'm based in Germany. So with me, uh, I have three panelists who will support uh, this webinar for content as well as some technical points. So let me introduce them. So the first one is Marisa Bell. Uh, she's Global Technical Manager for Poultry at EW Nutrition. 
Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Ruturaj. I am Marisabel Caballero. I am from Honduras. And uh, I would like to thank you uh, for participating in this webinar. As Ruturaj already mentioned, I'm working as a global technical manager uh, for EW Nutrition. Before that, I worked as a, a product manager for the same company. And uh, in the years before that, I acquired experience uh, in the fields of uh, poultry nutrition and production. So again, thank you very much uh, for participating in the webinar and um, let's uh, uh, continue with uh, the next panelist. Thanks, thanks Marisabel. And now uh, we'll introduce our second panelist, uh, Mr. Zia. Uh, he's a general manager, EW Icon. Thank you, Rutu. Değerli katılımcılar, Alman ortağımız EW Nutrition ile birlikte düzenlediğimiz kanatlarda solunum sistemi hastalıkları, sonuçlar ve çözüm önerileri konulu e, webinar seminerimize hoş geldiniz. E, tüm katılımcılara e, değerleri vakitlerini ayırdıkları e, ve katkıları için şimdiden e, çok teşekkür eder. Hepinize sağlıklı günler dilerim. Yes, Mutraş. Thanks, Ziya. And now I introduce uh, our third panelist, uh, our Turkish expert, Gulsin. Merhaba arkadaşlar. 7 yıldır EWE Konaşehir'de Bölge Teknik Müdürü olarak görev almaktayım. Hepinize ayrı ayrı çok çok teşekkür ediyorum seminerimize katıldığınız için. İnşallah çok güzel, verimli bir toplantı olacak. Görüşmek dileğiyle. Thanks. Uh, thanks Gülsin. So just few technical points uh, to explain uh, the set of this webinar. So I will deliver my presentation in about 40 minutes. Uh, during this presentation, uh, you can ask questions uh, in Q&A form that opens when you click on Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Uh, these questions are read and possibly answered in real time by our panelists. <clears throat> and if they require a longer or complex answer, we will save them for the Q&A session at the end of presentation. Uh, at the end of presentation, uh, we are also inviting you for leaving your feedback on this webinar. The poll will remain open for three minutes after I close the session. So once again, thanks, thanks for being here. And now let's start. So uh, this, this is a topic for our uh, today's discussion, a respiratory challenge in poultry and available solution. So the outline of presentation is, I will be talking on respiratory disorders uh, that's impact on the bird's performance customer expectations, so what farmers expect during the respiratory uh, challenges in the farms, some success stories about our product, and the end is would be our recommendation and conclusion. So before I start uh, with a respiratory disorders impact uh, on birth performance, uh, I will, would like to take you through uh, respiratory system uh, details about poultry because uh, poultry respiratory system is anatomically little different uh, than mammals. So now you can see on the left side of your screen, uh, uh, the poultry respiratory system, uh, which might be uh, complex than the humans or other animals. So it comprises of trachea, uh, yeah. So trachea, uh, then uh, air sacs, lungs, so uh, the lungs uh, in poultry are small and they are uh, not able to expand uh, because they firmly attach to the ribs. So the gaseous exchange uh, in poultry is done by the movement of uh, air sacs. So air, can, air sacs can inflate and deflate the air within poultry. So in poultry, uh, the respiratory system also called as a non-tidal system because tidal is something related with the volume of lungs. And since in poultry, the volume of the respiratory system is not related with lungs only because it's been done by air sacs, poultry respiratory system is called as non-tidal system. So next would be uh, important functions of a respiratory system. So we all know uh, there are many important functions of respiratory system like gas exchange which is a very important and a very key one uh, it's involved with the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide 
release of heat uh, which is very important and unique in case of poultry uh, because we know birds don't have sweat glands they cannot uh, lose uh, lose the heat by sweat so they have to have, uh, release the heat through respiration and during the high temperature the birds increase the respiration rate and they try to uh, a, a, a release the heat through the gaseous exchange and that's why you can see the respiration rate goes high during the high uh, temperature in the farms detoxification is also one of the major functions of respiratory system uh, it's mainly related with uh, toxic gases like sulfur dioxide uh, which uh, lungs uh, don't allow to get entry into the body and then uh, another important is rapid adjustment of acid base balance so uh, birds uh, the blood ph is around 7.35 to 7.45 uh, but birds are very sensitive for any small deviation in ph change of blood so uh, the it, it can be deviated mainly by carbonic acid that is high level of carbon dioxide so by reducing level of carbon dioxide uh, respiratory system also able to balance the acid base uh, in blood so uh, next uh, is respiration rate average respiration rate in birds is around 30 per minute uh, and it can vary from light period which can be around 35 and in dark period it can be around 23 but as i was mentioning during the hot weather the respiration rate can go up to 150 per minute which is very very high i i can just correlate here uh, for normal human adults we have respiration rate 12 to 20 per minute so we can imagine the respiratory system in poultry is very important and it's involved into many functions uh, also during the hot weather conditions so now uh, as we understood about the uniqueness of respiratory system in poultry and the important functions i will also introduce you about some defensive elements uh, of the poultry respiratory system and the three main defensive elements are cilia, goblet cells, and scavenging cells. So this we all know about. Cilia are tiny hair-like structures which are present in upper respiratory tract, that is in trachea. And due to its characteristic sweeping movement, they can propel the particles out. And goblet cells are mucin-secreting cells. Uh, we are commonly called it as mucus and the mucus is a sticky material which uh, allow the not allow the particles to get entry into lower respiratory tract so uh, there is a small clip here you can see how uh, actually this mucociliary apparatus is working so this is a characteristic sweeping moment of cilia and these are the goblet cells which secrete the mucus so with a synchronized mode of action cilia and mucus can propel the particles or bacteria which are trying to get entry into respiratory tract but more, uh, one of the important thing we need to know that the goblet cell number is variable and any inflammatory uh, reaction in the respiratory tract the num number of goblet cell goes high and that's why we see the mucus secretion goes higher during the respiratory challenge conditions then there is another clip you can see here on the right of the screen it's a scavenging activity of the cells uh, this is nothing but like a phagocytic activity uh, this is an electron microscopic uh, video taken for the phagocytosis so these are the cells which are present in the lungs and which scavenges the bacteria or the particles which can uh, get entry into lower respiratory tract so why uh, we we are looking into this defensive elements because this this is also very important to know that these defensive elements can create problem for the poultry when there is a respiratory challenge and how we'll see in the next slides so factors affecting the respiratory system uh, the uh, we commonly know about airborne origin factors like ammonia and dust particle which might be generally originated with uh, uh, managemental issues in the farm, like dry litter, overcrowding of the birds, feeder, poor ventilation, feeding. So these airborne origin uh, problems can create adversely affect the health of the birds, which can cause 
irritation, coughing, and lower resistance. Uh, so birds become susceptible or sensitive to any secondary infection. This uh, airborne uh, particles also can cause plugs, uh, which is uh, nothing but a block at the junction of bronchi, uh, which can create a suffocation situation. And this is very important because you can uh, know that when there is a respiratory problem in the farm, uh, you will always lose the heavy bird first. Uh, so it's not the the infection is causing the mortality, but is the suffocation is causing the mortality, and that is happening mainly because in the bigger birds, they are more sensitive for hypoxia. They need more oxygen, uh, and they are more sensitive for suffocation. So that is one of the major uh, uh, impact on the economy of the farm. You lose the heaviest bird first during the respiration problem. You never lose a small birds. Next, uh, factors affecting, uh, we know about pathogenic intermissions and uh, there are many pathogens like viruses, bacteria, which can cause uh, respiratory problems in poultry, uh, viral origin like Newcastle disease, infectious bronchitis, infectious laryngotracheitis, ILT or pneumovirus, foul pox. There can be some mycoplasma or bacterial origin like MG or CRD, MS, and E. coli also, infectious coryzas. So another point, important point we need to know, uh, the multifactorial nature of avian respiratory diseases. Uh, because when you have a respiratory problem in the birds, it's never a unique infection. There will be always a secondary complications of bacteria happening. And this might be due to primary pathogens, which are mentioned over here, can take over uh, in the birds during any immunosuppressive conditions. And that might be coming from IBD, like uh, Gambaro, we know about chicken anemia uh, or Marex or mycotoxins problems. So these are very common uh, immunosuppressive uh, uh, agents available in any flocks and can create birds susceptible to primary pathogens to cause uh, respiratory problems. And these uh, immunosuppressive conditions can also get aggravated by environmental factors like what we discussed in previous slide, uh, which are originated mainly through uh, managemental issues or it might be coming from nutritional factors also. So ultimately, these infections can get complicated with uh, bacterial infections like E. coli and Pasteurella. So, what we need to know here that when we are treating the respiratory diseases with antibiotics, we are just treating this part. We are treating the secondary infections, but we are not uh, able to treat the primary pathogens, which might be originated from viral uh, reasons. So during viral uh, respiratory diseases, we need to support the immunity of the birds. We need to support the symptoms of the respiratory diseases and maybe antibiotics will not able to help in this situation. So now we'll see what is the economical impact of respiratory disorders. As we know, dyspnea and gasping are very common signs, uh, which is uh, nothing but a difficulty in breathing in the birds. Distort thermoregulation, uh, which is uh, because of the the release in the heat of birds can get disturbed during the respiratory problems because they cannot respire properly uh, because of the block uh, or high mucus content. It also causes dehydration in the birds. Generally, birds go for off feeding. They stop eating feed, which also impact on the feed conversion ratio, also on the production cost. And as we know, any stress in the birds can cause immunosuppression. So the birds will have become more sensitive to catch up any secondary infections. And that's why we see uh, E. coli or gut infections also very commonly uh, after uh, any respiratory problems. Heavy morbidity and mortality. So this is nothing but a spread of disease. So we know birds are being kept at very high density than any other animals. So a uh, general farm, farm size is always in the few thousand number of birds. So any infections comes into the birds, which spreads very fast. So 
the number of birds get affected that is morbidity can be very very high in respiratory problems and it's also cause heavy mortality losses high treatment cost because we know uh, the treatment cost for uh, respiratory problems is very high and it can uh, always come with poor prognosis prognosis is we can say stage of recovery so although we spend lot of money on treating the respiratory disorders uh, it's very difficult to bring back the birds to the normal performance so respiratory disorders are always been known for high cost for treatment and uh, poor recovery so once your farm may get affected with the respiratory problems it would be very difficult to bring back them to normal performance so now we've seen this about uh, the economical impact and then i will take you into the next step what the poultry farmers should look for when there is a respiratory problem yeah so the first is faster breathing relief in respiratory symptoms so this is related with giving relief to the birds because we know as we discussed in previous slides the major problem in the birds is causing because of the suffocation and the uh, mucus content can cause a lot of stress to the birds so to give relief uh, to the birds is first and foremost thing would be having breathing relief which can be by mucolytic activity and farmers expect to give a faster relief to the birds which can be very visibly observed uh, by re uh, less respiratory sounds or we can say gurgling sound or respiratory rails in the farm which is very clearly audible and uh, so when you are using any uh, applications uh, or medications during the period uh, you expect that the birds start uh, uh, recovering by reducing the sounds the second can be improved appetite because uh any medications given uh, during this period is always through feed and water and if birds are not coming on the feed and water they are not able to get the medicine so it's very important to bring that back the birds on the feed and water also for energy supply because if birds are under stress they need more energy they need uh, energy to re recover also so improving appetite is not only important for maintaining the profitability but it is also important for recovery of the birds so reduction in mortality yes it's a very common expectations uh, for the farmers uh, we want to lose as less as birds in respiratory problems so ultimately the what is our ultimate objective is quick recovery from respiratory symptoms without or with minimal antibiotic use so why i am mentioning this year like now uh, in the market like turkey which is already now started following uh, eu guideline and customers are always uh, fascinated with uh, less antibiotic use uh, or no antibiotic uh, use in the birds uh, you uh, and the companies want to promote the chicken or egg with without antibiotic uh, ever kind of claims so in during the respiratory problems uh, farmers still expect the flock to treat even with uh, without antibiotics or with minimum possible therapeutic use of antibiotics so what can be the solution so here we have a product gripozon so gripozon is a, a brand name of our product uh, which is for respiratory health to support uh and by mitigating need of antibiotics by maintaining the performance so how gripozon is able to deliver this gripozon is having very strong mucolytic activity and as we talked about uh, the major cause of uh, problems or losses in respiratory problem is mainly related with mucus and stress so with mucolytic activity uh, gripozon able to give fast relief to the birds which helps in to improving the appetite so birds start coming on the feed and water so any medication also given or you if you are uh, already giving antibiotics but start getting more antibiotics during period and it helps in to faster recovery so uh, by mucolytic activity and uh, also anti stress gripozon supports the immunity so 
which is very important in case of viral infections. Uh, we, we cannot treat viral infections by antibiotics, by, but by just supporting the immunity. So gripozone helps into relieving the symptoms as well as supports the immunity. So that's why we say you have viral pneumonia or viral infections, gripozone can able to support uh, even without antibiotics or with less use of antibiotics. And last is better performance and liability. That is what our ultimate objective. So you can able to reach this objective by uh, different mode of actions of gripozone. So this, this is a brief about key mode of actions of gripozone. And now I will take you into some scientific proof, uh, what science say about. So uh, about the key ingredients. So gripozone is a phytogenic uh, product which is a mainly phytomolecule based solution, liquid application. And we have uh, many, many references available uh, on the web, which talks about or which supports the claim what we are doing about gripozone. And I will share a few of them to you. First, uh, this is a handbook of essential oils, uh, a very well known book for phytomolecules. And uh, we are sharing here a reference for menthol and 1-8 cineol. So uh, what it says here that the volatile nature of these essential oils supports inhalation. So be, be, uh, because of the volatile nature of these oils, they are able to give, uh, put impact on the upper respiratory tract and they helps into uh, better inhalation. And that is what uh, one of our claim. Few more uh, reference, which talks about uh, respiratory effect of menthol. Uh, menthol is known as antitussive. Uh, antitussive is nothing but reduce reduction in the cough. And it can do at very low concentration as well. It also reduces respiratory discomfort and sensations of dyspnea. Then for 1-8 cineol, uh, it also referred that it has mucolytic and mucociliary effect, uh, which you can connect with the, the previous slide, which we talked about how mucociliary effect is important for normal uh, defense elements. So 1-8 cineol is able to break down or dissolve the mucus, uh, and it helps into re easier removal of secretions. So this is very important. Uh, with this, 1-8 cineol can help to give relief from the mucus, which is an inflammatory response of the body against the respiratory problems. But uh, by reducing the mucus content, uh, we can give a symptomatic relief to the birds. That's why it helps into reducing the respiratory discomfort and sensations of dyspnea. Some uh, scientific proofs, uh, which also supports about the phytomolecules in gripozone for immunomodulation. So the phytomolecules in gripozone can promote both cell mediated as well as antibody mediated immune response. And it can be done by increasing immunoglobulin productions, by increasing lymphocytic activity, by increasing interferon gamma release. So this is very important to know that uh, we can able to support the immunity of birds uh, during the high stress situations or during the viral infections. So we can support the birds only by better immunity and allowing the birds to get recovered. Uh, one more reference about anti-stress and an anti-inflammatory activity about the actives in gripozone. And the actives in gripozone are known for alleviate the stress during any stressful situations uh, like vaccination. So we know uh, vaccination is also kind of stress to the birds. And uh, that's why you might see some vaccine reactions uh, during live vaccines uh, in the birds. So gripozone can support as an anti-stress uh, to alleviate the stress. And it also helps into enhancing the efficacy of vaccination. So by promoting antibody production. So this is related with a better vaccine response. So gripozone can help to support better vaccine response. And eucalyptus oil or 1-8 cineol also known for a strong anti-inflammatory, pain relieving and edema reducing properties. So this is something which we are expecting 
to uh, uh, work during uh, uh, respiratory problems, which helps into reducing the pain or uh, giving relief to the birds with, uh, with anti-inflammatory activity of one eight sinuol. So uh, this, this was all about uh, web references or some scientific uh, reference uh, available about uh, phytomolecules in gripozone. And now uh, we will share with you some uh, commercial success stories, which, which are linked with uh, some experiences of gripozone use. So success stories from all around the world. So we have uh, some uh, success stories already been, uh, which I'm few of them I'm sharing with you here. This is uh, from Thailand and uh, here what we are talking about uh, effective uh, mitigation of ILT vaccine reactions by gripozone. And uh, this was done in the layer growing stage. Uh, there were two groups we had. One was a control group, another was a gripozone group. Uh, 10,000 birds each, Lohman Brown classic was the breed. And in uh, control, there was no supplementation. And in gripozone, we had supplemented gripozone at 200 ml per 1,000 liter of water. And this was given post-vaccination from third day of vaccination to after a seventh day of vaccination. So um, uh, all birds were vaccinated in week 10 uh, as per the routine vaccine schedule followed in Thailand. Then out of that, 44 cages from these 10,000 birds, uh, having 12 birds each cage were randomly selected. And these 12 uh, or these 44 cages are being kept under observation. And they, the birds are observed for frequency of gurgling, that is a respiratory rail sound, uh, number of birds suffering from nasal discharges or lacrimation. Uh, and this was being observed after fifth to seventh day of vaccine. So why fifth to seventh day? Because this is the uh, incubation period for the vaccine. So we know that ILT vaccine can create a lot of uh, strong vaccine reactions, uh, live vaccines. So, and this has been generally observed after fifth day of vaccination. So we observed the response of the birds on fifth day to seventh day of vaccine. And what was the results? So results, you can see the gurgling sound post vaccine uh, for the gripozone group on day five, day six, and day seven. The, the reaction of birds gone down three to four times. So birds shown three to four times less gurgling sound in gripozone supplemented group compared to control. So what is the benefit? Benefit is gripozone uh, was able to prevent the negative effects of vaccine which helps to stabilize the feed consumption and also supports the bird's immunity. Because uh, in case of grower layers, it's very important to have uh, standard body weights and uniformity. And anything which affects on the feed consumption, may, maybe because of the vaccine reaction, can, can uh, affect on the uh, body weight gain or uh, uniformity of the flock. Some more uh, success stories. Uh, this is from India. And uh, this was mainly from aerial sp uh, spray use of uh, gripozone. Uh, this, these are the wordings we taken directly from the customer's feedback. And what this customer is saying that after observing high respiratory sounds, gripozone was used. And gripozone was uh, used with aerial spray. And within span of few hours, uh, the respiratory sounds goes down. So now they are using, uh, during the high incidences of respiratory sounds, gripozone uh, by aerial spray twice on first day. That is with 12 hours gap. And then this uh, spray can be repeated or uh, uh, repeated in this case was after uh, 24 hours on next three days. So they sprayed two times on first day and then every 24 hours it was repeated for next three days. Uh, and now after seeing this success story, uh, some of the customers already started using gripozone as a prevention uh, through drinking water. And now it is based on occurrence of the sounds from the previous batches. So 
we know about some seasonal issues in the flocks which commonly happened in some part of the year uh, birds are more sensitive for getting respiratory problems so in uh, this case the farmer started to use gripozon as a prevention uh, by a previous batches experience and it was also based on the symptoms observed in the adjacent farms we, this is very important yeah so you we know uh, turkey is a very very uh, Uh, highly dense populated for the poultry and some of the regions are maybe more dense and if you found problems in nearby farms it also always advisable to start something in your farms uh, as a preventative so gripozon can support uh, as a preventive tool to support the birds uh, immunity to uh, avoid the spread of the disease from adjacent farms next uh, success story uh, coming from usa and uh, this customer is talking about uh, the use of gripozon in early respiratory cases uh, in which there was a coughing nasal discharge slight lethargy but not showing any signs of bacterial pneumonia so this case was ma mainly with viral pneumonia uh, the bird were, uh, birds were showing signs but uh, there was no bacterial infection yet and what gripozon could do so in this case the use of gripozon was uh, the the what farmer is saying that there was a good success for preventing the viral challenging from developing into bacterial pneumonia so uh, gripozon was able to give symptomatic relief and since uh, the immunity was been maintained well the birds started recover faster and they are not gone into bacterial secondary complications so there was ultimately help into decreasing need of antibiotics uh, and uh, another customer from usa talk about gripozon was immediately able to support uh, the water intake there was a immediate increase in water intake was found in uh, flu cases and uh, we as all know as experienced farmers that the first sign of recovery in the birds is water intake so if if you birds are already coming on the water that shows that they are recovering and it also supports uh, their energy intake and immunity so this this was all about our some uh, customer feedbacks and now uh, i will talk about quality management yes uh, we are from germany uh, we don't need to talk about quality of our products but we uh, i just to bring on the confidence we are sharing points here that uh, we all our products from ew nutrition are been manufactured in our own uh, manufacturing facilities so gripozon is manufactured in germany uh, which is a gmp plus plant and that's why uh, right from the raw material sourcing to the final quality control release all been all things are been done uh, by in house so we have end to end process control no batch to batch variation yes because this is very important uh, in case of phytogenic products uh, because uh, anyone can formulate the product based on the reference articles available or information available but in case of phytogenic products what is difficult is to ensure the quantity of phytomolecules from batch to batch and as we know the activity of product is coming from phytomolecules if we cannot ensure the right quantity of phytomolecules in each batch we can see the up and downs in the results so with strong r&d backup in aw nutrition we can ensure that we are having a exact same quantity of phytomolecules from each batch so the consistency of the results will always remain same the products of uh, our all products are been constantly monitored to detect undesired substances like dioxin heavy metals some other chemical impurities so it's been done at the uh, raw material as well as at the finished good stage uh, which is a part of even gmp plus compliance and excellent mixability yeah so this is very important uh, in case of uh, gripozon kind of product uh, which is a volatile oil based product uh and especially for the poultry farms uh, when you are using any liquid additive we use a uh, additive in the uh, tank of the farm and there was one tank is supplied to 1000 num uh, number of birds in one house 
so if the product is used is not mixable in the water it cannot uh, we cannot ensure that product is reaching to all birds in the flock so gripozone is coming with excellent mixability and that can ensure the bio availability of gripozone is excellent across the birds so now about application so uh, gripozone can be applied through water as well as through spray so i will first uh, tell about how it can be used uh, as per our recommendation in drinking water so this is uh, for broilers and this is for broiler breeders or layers so the dose what we recommend of gripozone is based on uh, the requirement so we can use gripozone as a preventive or we can use gripozone as reactive so as a preventive uh, it can be used at 100 ml per 1000 liter of water for 3 to 5 days uh, depend upon the severity so when it can be recommended as a preventive it can be recommended as a preventive or as a anti stress during uh, you found any vaccine reactions uh, after ib nd ilt live vaccinations uh, and if you the reactions are severe like respiratory sounds drop in the feed and water consumption or some nasal discharges uh, birds can be supplemented with gripozone uh, at 100 ml so just 3 to 5 days uh, 24 hours water gripozone can help the support the immunity to get a better vaccine response and most importantly uh, to help the production or uh, not to have impact on the uh, profitability of the customers uh, which is very important in case of broilers because if you lose even couple of days of feed intake it can carry on uh, the impact uh, throughout the cycle of the broilers uh, and in case of breeders or layers yes it's also important for body weight Uh, and uniformity or cv percentage and then another use of uh, gripozone as i was mentioning about reactive and uh, when you are uh, found already a problem in your flock respiratory outbreaks gripozone is recommended to use at higher dose 200 ml per 1000 liter of water for 3 to 5 days this can be at any stage so you can see we are not giving any uh, days here because it is based on uh, the signs uh, been observed in your flock and this uh, this uh, those is also based on the vaccine schedule uh, followed in your flock so for the reactive dose uh, at 200 ml uh, gripozone can support by its mucolytic and immunomodulating activity uh, which helps into faster relief from the respiratory symptoms irrespective of etiology so what i mean here that whatever may be the cause of respiratory problem gripozone can help it might be a viral pneumonia it can be a bacterial pneumonia or it can be uh, just non infectious uh, respiratory problems which can be occurred by ammonia or dust gripozone can support in all conditions because gripozone is supporting on symptoms it is helping to relieve the birds from mucus and also by supporting the immunity and this that's why uh, in case of viral pneumonia or even in bacterial pneumonia the faster recovery of the birds can help the farmers to reduce the therapeutic use of antibiotics another uh, way of using gripozone is through aerial spray and uh, yeah so aerial spray uh, we recommend to use gripozone at 2% solution so you can use 200 ml of gripozone in 10 liter of water and this 2% solution or 10 liter of solution uh, can be spread in 200 square meter area for 2 to 3 days twice daily we recommend to use spray generally in the cool hours early morning or late evening and why because our recommendation is to uh, restrict the ventilation uh, just for 1 hour Uh, during the spray Be because restricting the ventilation uh, during the spray or after the spray will ensure that the spray uh, or the particles of gripozone sol solution uh, can remain in the environment little longer and it also creates a real nebulization effect to the birds and that's why uh, restricting ventilation it is possible in early morning or late evening so you repeat this for a uh, 12 hours gap and uh, when the spray is been done uh, 
it it it need to be done directly on the birds uh, like the what it shown here and it it can be done or uh, from 2 feet distance uh, from the birds so which uh, allows the the birds uh, the upper respiratory tract of the birds can get exposed to the gripozon solution and gripozon start working immediately uh, to give relief to the birds so uh, this was about uh, uh, gripozon and now uh, what what is a take home message or summary so gripozon is a effective tool for managing respiratory diseases and what it brings in for you it comes with excellent water mixability so it ensures as i was saying better bioavailability or high bioavailability to the birds uh, being a liquid product it's a on farm application with flexible use so any uh, uh, need in the flock or any time you can react very fast with a liquid application so you get a flexibility of using gripozon based on your need quick relief yeah so as i was talking about uh, gripozon is coming with strong mucolytic and relaxant activity so it supports the birds for quick relief uh, from any uh, respiratory dis conditions it supports the water and feed intake so it helps into uh bring back the birds uh for by supporting the immunity and it also helps into maintaining the performance of the birds uh, uh, especially in broilers or even in breeders uh, the feed intake is is very very important support post vaccination immune response yeah so this is uh, we talked about uh, to get a better res response uh, especially for breeders or for layers when you want to keep the birds for longer period we want to ensure the birds are vaccinated well and the birds are getting a good vaccine response so gripozon also can support uh, by better post vaccination immune response So this was uh, a brief about a gripozon, and uh, this was my last slide. So uh, I see some of the questions are already coming in Q and A, and now my colleagues in uh, uh, panelists can support uh, for answering some of them questions. So this is the time for questions and answers. Thank you. Arkadaşlar toplantıya katılımınızdan dolayı hepinize ayrı ayrı çok çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Şimdi sorular ve cevaplama bölümüne geçiyoruz. Ee, ben birçok soru gördüm ee, question ve answer box'ta. Elimden geldiğince hepsini cevaplamaya çalıştım. Başka sorularınız olursa ben direkt olarak e, Mr. Rütraj'a ileteceğim. Lütfen sorularınızı almaya devam edebiliriz. Teşekkürler. Okay. One of the questions, Rutraj, how we can use the uh, gripozon as a preventative in broiler flocks? Okay, so uh, this is uh, something uh, I talked about uh, uh, based on the previous flock history. Uh, uh, if there is a seasonality. Uh, you have any respiratory problems in the same part of the year uh, we can start gripozon as a preventive uh, based on our experience uh, it also based on uh, nearby flocks problems so if you some of the regions uh, like in turkey as i was mentioning are very densely uh, packed with the farms and if nearby farms are already starting getting respiratory outbreaks we can start using gripozon uh, even before we get hit of respiratory problems as a preventative and another way of preventive is to uh, get uh, uh, after the vaccinations to to elevate uh, the vaccine reactions and to get a better vaccine response and maintaining uh, the good immunostatus of the birds 
Okay. As a preventative önleyici olarak arkadaşlar glukozonu iki şekilde kullanabilirsiniz. Bu bölgenizdeki solunum hastalıklarının yoğunluğuna da bağlı biraz. Eğer sık sık solunum hastalıkları ile karşı karşıya kalıyorsanız her bir broiler kümesinde 10. günden sonra her hafta iki kez olmak kaydıyla bunu kullanabilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda aşılama reaksiyonlarından sonra yapmış olduğunuz aşıların etkinliğini de arttırmak adına ve hayvanları stresten kurtarmak adına 3 ila 5 gün boyunca 100 cc glukozonu 1000 litre içme suyunda 24 saat boyunca kullanmanız yeterlidir. Bu hayvanların gösterdiği reaksiyona bağlı olarak 3 ila 5 gün arasında kullanımınız değişecektir. Okay. And another question, Rutraj. Yeah. How gripozon can support the antibiotic treatments? Okay. Uh, so, uh, first thing we need to know that gripozon is not a replacement of antibiotics. Gripozon is uh, complementing the antibiotics by immunomodulating and giving symptomatic relief. So. Any respiratory challenges, which are just originated from viral origin, you even don't need to treat the birds with antibiotics. But okay. yeah, in case of uh, practically, it is not possible because you don't never get a pure viral infections. So when you are treating antibiotics, you are treating uh, just a secondary infections and you are not able to treat the viral infections, which are primary pathogens. So in that case, uh, gripozone is playing a role of supporting the immunity, which is very important for any viral challenge uh, disease conditions. A better immunity will help faster recovery. And uh, another very important point is about symptomatic relief, because uh, as we talked about, the mortality in respiratory problems is happens because of suffocation or because of high mucus and not because of the infection but dies because of mucus problems and not because of the infection so ultimately we need to support the birds for a less uh, a mucus or giving them relief and which is what gripozone can bring in with uh, good mycolytic activity it gives immediate relief to the birds and that's why it supports uh, the feed and water intake and ultimately you see the faster recovery of the birds e even uh, with antibiotics use uh, the gripozone can help with faster recovery mm -hmm. okay now i'm going to answer rutraj thank you Okay. Ee, bu soruyu hangi arkadaşımız sorduysa çok çok teşekkür ediyorum kendisine. Gerçekten son derece önemli bir kriter bu. Hiçbir zaman e, gripozon antibiyotik tedavisini yerine alır ya da antibiyotiklerini yerine kullanılır gibi herhangi bir söylemimiz yok. Ama kesinlikle ve kesinlikle gripozon içerisinde bulunan fitomoleküller ve standart şekilde seçilmiş olan fitomoleküllerin etkisiyle, bunlar mentol, sineol, direkt olarak yaşamakta olduğunuz viral hastalıklardan ardından ikinci il bir hastalık. Örneğin bakteriyel pneumonia yani zatüre dediğimiz hastalığa hayvanların yakalanmasını olabildiğince hafifletir. Bu şekilde antibiyotik kullanımınızı olabildiğince minimize etmektedir. Aynı zamanda hayvanlarınızda bu tip rahatsızlıklarda ileri derecede hırıltı hatta boğulmaya giden genç hayvanlarda değil özellikle ergin hayvanlarda boğulma nedeniyle birçok hayvan kaybedebiliyoruz. Özellikle de yazın. Bunu olabildiğince minimize edecektir. Niçin? Çünkü mukul satımını, sekresyonun atılımını hızlandıracaktır. Tüm bunlar birleştiği zaman sizin antibiyotik kullanım miktarınız olabildiğince azalacaktır. Umarım yeterli bir cevaptır. Ee, daha fazla cevap almak istiyorsanız e, başka further question'larla ileri derecede question'larla e, bize katılabilirsiniz. Şimdi başka bir soru daha. E, e, the gripozone is a e, volatile and when we add to the drinking water Rutraj, how long it's uh, stable? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a very good question. Um, yeah, it is. And, uh, it is. Volatile yeah. oils, yes. And, uh, from, yes. Uh, even when uh, this you use through drinking water, because of the high volatile oil content in gripozone, uh, it start working immediately when uh, it's reached to the bird level. And when uh -huh. birds start drinking uh, the gripozone uh, uh, supplemented water, 
uh, the oils uh, from uh, gripozoan start uh, evaporating from the mouth cavity of the birds and then the same uh, uh, uh, being inhaled by birds which which able to give uh, the impact in the upper respiratory tract and the easy so uh, way of identifying is smell smell of the gripozoan so when you are using gripozoan even in the drinking water you can smell the gripozoan is been used in the farm maybe from some distance already and that shows that the volatile oil in the gripozoan are working and huh? and coming to the stability of volatile oils they are stable although they are volatile in nature they cannot evaporate it from the water or from the product as such they can only evaporate when they are exposed to air only so when you add gripozoan in overhead tank they are not going to go anywhere when until they reach to the bird because it's going through uh, automatic water channel uh, through the nipples and when it reach to the birds then and then only the volatile uh, oil start working mm -hmm. thank you very much rutu <clears throat> Gripozon içerisindeki aktif maddeler hava ile mukayese ettiklerinde <gülüyor> uçucu maddelere dönüşürler. Bunu e, nebulizasyon etkisi olarak düşünebiliriz. Mesela astım, kronik, bronşit hastalarında otomatikman içerisindeki aktif maddeler e, uçucu maddelere dönüşür ve akciğerlerin üst kısmında hayvanı rahatlatıcı ve daha rahat nefes alıcı etkiyi gösterir. Gripozon da aynen bu mekanizma ile çalışmakta ve içme suyuna katılan gripozon Hayvanın direkt kanatlının seviyesinde e, e, hayvan içme suyuyla alana değin herhangi bir e, yok olma gibi bir şey söz konusu değil. Buradaki buharlaşma dediğimiz içindeki aktif maddenin buharlaşarak hayvanın ondan olabildiğince maksimum seviyede faydalanıp akciğerlerin üst seviyesindeki hırıltı olsun, boğulma etkisi olsun, rahat nefes alamama olsun... Tüm bu negatif semptomları ortadan gidermeyle ilişkili ve gripozon e, bunların hepsini e, yapabilen bir ürün. And another question. Çok güzel sorular arka arkaya geliyor. Hmm. Özellikle infeksiyöz bronşit ve Newcastle aşılamalarından sonra e, daha fazla yararlı olur mu gibi bir soru gelmiş. E, Especially vaccination of infectious bronchitis and ND rutu. How we can use gripozone and is it really helpful? Sorry? Uh, after, after the vaccine. IB and ND, especially, yeah. Uh, after the vaccination, how, how gripozone is supporting? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this question. So, um, as as uh, I was sharing uh, some of the uh, reference articles, uh, uh, which talks about uh, the actives uh, in gripozone are being able to support uh, both immunities, antibody mediated as well as sedum mediated immunity. So, uh, uh, the ultimately uh, what we expect from the vaccine is to get a better antibody response. So any uh, phytomolecules which are able to support the better antibody response, uh, it's, it's going to decide on the success of the vaccine. So by its anti-stress and immunomodulating activity, gripozone can support the better uh, immunostatus of the birds. And maybe this is, can be very, really, very easily been uh, uh, observed by the farmers, uh, especially in breeders, when you check the titers very frequently in the birds, mm -hmm. uh, after the gripozone uh, supplementation, you can uh, check the titer report, uh, which would be stay longer than the normal birds. And that uh, supports that gripozone is able to support a better immune response, uh, even after the vaccination. Thank you, Rutu. Thank you. Gripozon'un e, anti-stress etkisi ve immunomodulator etkisi var. Daha önceden de bahsettiğimiz gibi. Ve bu immunomodulator etkisi zaten asıl önemli olandır. Çünkü biz aşıyla ne yapıyoruz? Hepimizin bildiği gibi zayıflatılmış patojenler veriyoruz vücuda ve hayvanların hastalıklara karşı direncini arttırıyoruz. Bunun içerisindeki immunomodulator etkisiyle siz 
antibiyotik titrelerinizin daha yüksek olmasını sağlayabiliyorsunuz. Dolayısıyla da yapmış olduğunuz aşılamalardan hayvanın daha etkin bir şekilde yararlanmasını sağlayarak öte yandan da aşılama sonrasında hayvanın yüzde kaldığı stres koşullarını antistres etkisiyle de olabildiğince minimize edip hayvanınızın daha rahat nefes almasını sağlayarak daha relax bir pozisyonda olmasını sağlıyorsunuz. Dolayısıyla gripozon aşılamalardan sonra 3 ila 5 gün içerisinde 100 cc verildiğinde hayvanınız hem aşıdan çok daha iyi yararlanmış oluyor, hem çok daha iyi antibody titreleri elde edebiliyorsunuz, hem de çok daha az stres faktörü ile karşı karşıya kalıyor. Az stres eşittir, çok iyi performans. Teşekkür ediyorum. Ee, sorularımız devam ediyor. Okay. Bir, bir saniye, ee, bir sorumuz daha var burada. Ee, bu Raşap'ın da... Teşekkür ederim Ziya Bey. Evet, siz dinliyoruz. Özellikle yumurtacı kümeslerinde uygulamalar sırasında hiperlerde tıkılma, tıkanmaya neden olabilir mi? Çünkü bu durum hayvanın suya gitmesini veya da su almasını engelliyor. Hı hı. Ee, bunu bir soralım. Ee, önemli sorulardan bir tanesi. Nüperlerde tıkanma yapabilir mi değil mi? Evet. Okay. Is there any negative side effect like organic acids does sometimes, you know, in the nipple water line? It can be, you know, to block the nipple line or not, Rutu? Yeah, so blocking uh, nipple line is something uh, always related with uh, the solubility of the product. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have tested gripozone at various uh, hardness and pH conditions of the water. And gripozone is, is, is creating very uniform solutions. And even I see one question from uh, one customer here about is the water temperature important in the application? It's not because mm -hmm. gripozon is is coming with very very high uh, solubility and mm -hmm. it's that's why it ensures that it come create a very uniform solution uh, when it is mixed with water mm -hmm. so there is no problem of uh, having any biofilm formation by, because biofilm uh, formation is something happening mainly with vitamins when you are uh, giving uh, some uh, nutrient advantage to the bacteria and it might also happen with products which might creating some sedimentation or precipitation effect but in case of gripozon both these are not possible so okay. it's it is very good uh, mixable you don't need to have any specific water temperature to ensure mm -hmm. better mixability okay ee, bu soru için teşekkür ediyorum. Gerçekten önemli bir soru bu da. Ee, bu sorunun yanıtı e, gayet iyi suda çözünebilen, son derece iyi karışabilen bir üründür dedi. Eğer bir ürün çok iyi su ile karışmıyorsa bu tarz ürünler daha fazlasıyla nipellerde tıkanma yapar dedi. Aynı zamanda illaki bunun için bir sıcak su vesaire kullanmanıza gerek yok. Her tür koşulda oda sıcaklığındaki suda son derece iyi çözünen bir ürün olduğu için nipellerde tıkanma gibi bir probleme e, yol açması kesinlikle söz konusu değildir dedi. E, burada bir başka soru daha var. Bu da önemli bir soru. E, Rütü, this is the another important questions here. And it's a good question actually. Is there any application differences of gripozone during the winter time or during the summer time? Okay, so um, I would not say there is any difference between uh, the seasons. Of course, mm -hmm. the, it is based on the need, uh, based on the, the what uh, we are looking for, what benefit we are looking for. So mm -hmm. I, I see also one question uh, related with that, uh, what, was a, what is a gripozone's recommended dose under stress conditions? Mm -hmm. So uh, under the stress conditions or mm -hmm. as, as a immunomodulator or as a uh, uh, application after the vaccine, Mm -hmm. uh, gripozone used at 100 ml is good enough. So okay. and uh, so we we have two doses, 100 ml and 200 ml. So I would not say it is based on the season, but it is based on the need, the need mm -hmm. of the uh, farmer. So if it is they are using it as a preventive uh, mm -hmm. uh, supplementation or as an anti-stress supplementation mm -hmm. or as an immunomodulator supplementation after the vaccine, okay. 100 ml is the dose. And if it is as a reactive dose, when there is a problem already been observed in the farm, 200 ml uh, per thousand liter is the dose. Only we can vary the duration 
three to five days based mm -hmm. on the severity. But uh, we have to ensure that 24 hours of water is mixed with cryptozone. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Ee, Gripozon'un yaz ila kış uygulaması arasında herhangi hiçbir farklılık söz konusu değil. Çünkü e, Gripozon e, kullanımı mevsimsel olarak değişmiyor. Sizin ihtiyacınıza göre değişiyor. E, mesela aşılamalardan sonra kullanmak istediniz ya da solunum sistemi hastalıklarının başında yakaladınız. O zaman 100 cc 1000 litre içme suyunda vermeniz kafidir. Fakat e, çok şiddetli bir e, durum ile karşı karşıyasınız. E, Birçok üründe yaptığımız gibi eğer gerçekten şiddetli bir durum var ise o zaman tabii ki double dose diyoruz ve 200 cc 1000 litre suya kullanmanız gerekmektedir. Kullanım günleri yine 3 ila 5 gün arasında değişmektedir. Fakat benim naçizane tavsiyem e, sizlere hani burada rütürel söylemedi ama gerçekten çok şiddetli bir durum ile karşı karşıya kalırsanız ve daha kısa sürede e, daha iyi bir çözüme e, hızlıca ulaşmak isterseniz aerosol sprey şeklinde de direkt olarak gripozunu kullanabilirsiniz. Bunun kullanım miktarı da yine 1000 litre içme suyu içerisinde 200 cc'dir. E, ve bu e, 200 metrekarelik bir alanı içerir. Direkt hazırladıktan sonra solüsyonu hayvanlara iki adım mesafeden direkt olarak üzerlerine püskürterek çok şiddetli durumlar için konuşuyorum bunu. Çok daha kısa sürede ve çok güzel sonuçlar alabilirsiniz. Okay. Diğer And sorular... before, I'm sorry. Before uh, we run out of time, I would like to invite Mr. Sia if, uh, uh, to um, share with us uh, some experience uh, that was uh, acquired with Gripozone in Turkey. Yeah, it will be nice. Okay, th thank you, Manisa Bel. Uh, uh... Değerli katılımcılar, biliyorsunuz bu ürünümüzü biz e, yılbaşında e, sonra, e, 2020 yılbaşında e, Türkiye'ye pazara e, girme şansı e, sağlayabildik. E, bundan sonra da biliyorsunuz pandemi süreci çok fazla ürünü <gülüyor> sahada çalışma şansımız olmadı. Ancak e, özellikle e, yaptığımız e, değerli arkadaşlarımıza birlikte yürüttüğümüz e, çalışmalar sonucunda sahada e, Ürünün özellikle yem ve su tüketimini e, e, maksimum derecede motive ettiğini ve buna bağlı olarak da e, yem tüketiminin arttığını ve bu yem tüketiminin de bir şekilde FCR'a e, etkilediğini görebiliyoruz. Tabii ki ürün e, mutlaka solunum e, sistemi problemlerinde destekleyici olarak e, kullanılmalı. Ama bunun yanında özellikle e, hayvanın yeme gitmek istemediği dönemlerde bu da ki motivasyonu arttırmak için e, bunu e, sahada e, yaptığımız yapılan uygulamalarla çok net bir şekilde gördük. E, yem ve su tüketimini e, çok ciddi şekilde e, arttırdığını e, görüyoruz. Siz de eğer e, uygun olursa e, bu şekilde ürünü gözlemleme şansınız olacaktır. E, önümüzdeki günlerde bu konuyla da ilgili e, sizlere daha çok bilgi aktarmaya çalışacağız. Teşekkür ederim. Thanks, Mr. Ben. Benim burada göremediğim ya da yetişemediğim herhangi bir soru varsa, gözümden kaçan herhangi bir şey varsa, çünkü olabildiğince herkese yetişip sorularını cevaplama arzusu içerisindeyim. Lütfen bana iletebilir misiniz? So, Gülsin, uh, I see some... So still some of the questions are there and maybe uh, we can extend for five minutes uh, just to cover some of the questions. And uh, I, I, in meanwhile, I was trying to translate the questions for me in English and I yeah. could uh, find some interesting questions which I would like to take here. Uh, there is one question and many of them are from Anonymous. So I, sorry, I don't know the name from whom it is coming, but uh, can active liquid and gripozone be used together in drinking water? So the answer is yes, we can use, uh, we already tested the mixability of these two products. Active Liquid is another product from UW Nutrition and they are able to mix well in uh, water together. So there is no problem as far as uh, mixability or as far as the effect of the product is concerned. Uh, but only thing we need to understand is, is the, uh, the purpose what we are using. Uh, so Gripozone is been uh, mainly for respiratory problems. Uh, Uh, and active liquid is for gut health. 
Okey. Rütraj toplantımızı bir 10 dakika daha uzatacağımızı, çünkü burada değerli başka soruların da olduğunu ifade ettim. Ve sorulardan bir tanesi de aktivo likit, diğer bir fitojenik molekül ve gripozun aynı tank içerisinde içme suyunda kullanılabilir mi idi? Evet kullanılabilir. Aktivo likit direkt olarak bağırsak hastalıklarıyla ilgili, direkt olarak o hastalıkların çözümüyle ilgili ve yine antibiyotik kullanımınızı minimize edecek bir ürün. Gripozon ise direkt olarak solunum sistemi hastalıklarıyla ilgili. O yüzden her iki hastalığı mix bir şekilde sağınızda gördüğünüzde gönül rahatlığıyla içme suyu tankında hem aktif olukiydi hem de gripozonu kullanabilirsiniz. Ee, burada e, there is another question which is really important to return. Because of the, uh, the water quality in Turkey is really important. Uh, there is a, a ecolai problems uh, in the you know the drinking water. When we use the gripozon uh, in this kind of water, is the uh, impact affected uh, in a negative way of the you know the effect of gripozon or not? Water quality. Yeah, so no, there is no impact on the water consumption uh, because I also seen uh, same uh, maybe similar question on water intake uh, mm -hmm. or one uh, question was related with uh, whether we need to keep the water flowing with gripozone uh, application or uh, the concentration of gripozone can affect on the water intake. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, and and then the the it's it's easiest thing to connect is uh, we know about menthol and menthol is something which is a cooling agent uh, we all chew bubble gums yeah so bubble gums is what it is it is giving a cooling effect when you okay. uh, when you in fact uh, you uh, eat something with related with menthol your water intake goes up you because this cooling effect increases water intake and this is exactly what happened with gripozone. So uh, birds never uh, deny to come uh, on the water with gripozone. In fact, they start uh, drinking more and more water when the menthol uh, kind of actives are mixed in the water. Okay, so uh, the water quality doesn't affect of the gripozone activity, but if the water quality is really, really bad, that uh, somewhere is really bad, we know that, should we use, uh, is there any recommendation that we should use the gripozone double dosage or we can carry on the same dosage if the water quality is really bad? Okay, so it's it's nothing to do with the water quality actually because uh, we are not treating water here, we are treating the birds. And uh, so if uh, water quality is bad, uh, as per the general guideline, uh, we have to give uh, water which is uh, uh, potable to the birds. Uh, water is one of the major nutrient for the birds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is as per the general guideline, uh, we are supposed to take care of the range of pH and range of hardness ideal for Birds. And that's why you use gut as uh, the acidifiers or water sanitizers. But mm -hmm. to answer this uh, uh, short, that there is no dose need to be changed. It depend on the water quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, second part, uh, there is no compatibility issues for using sanitizers or other water additives with gripozone. So if you feel that uh, the water quality in the farm is really bad, Maybe the gripozone is not the solution to treat water, but you need to use some other sanitizers or acidifiers to make it portable uh, or drinkable to the birds and use gripozone for the dose what it has been used uh, for uh, the need in the birds, 100 ml or 200 ml. Okay. Ee, şimdi eğer gerçekten su kalitemiz bazı bölgelerde gerçekten kötü ve ekolayda mevcut. Eğer böyle bir probleminiz varsa, e, hani çünkü bu ürünün suyun kalitesiyle ilişkili hiçbir bağlantısı yok. Bunlar için acidifierler ya da sanitizerlar seçerek suyun kalitesiyle oynamalar yapabilirsiniz. Fakat gripozunun Hiçbir etkinliği üzerinde suyunuzun e, kalitesi ne kadar kötü olursa olsun gripozonun etkinliğini bertaraf edemez. Gripozon aynı şekilde anti stres etkisini, e, bağışıklık sisteminin geliştirici etkisini ve mukolitik etkisini sürdürmeye devam edecektir. Ve ayrıca ürünü e, çift doz falan kullanmanıza da gerek yok. Aynen bizim önerdiğimiz şekilde, önerdiğimiz dönemler için e, vermiş olduğumuz dozajlar geçerlidir. Suyun kalitesi kötü de olsa ürünün dozunu artırmanıza gerek yok arkadaşlar. 
Uh, one of our uh, important customer ask, uh, when is the earliest applied after vaccination and how many days? Okay, uh, so uh, actually uh, after the vaccination, our recommendation to use Gripozon uh, after third day, uh, which as is considered as an incubation period for any vaccine. So uh, after the vaccine is always better than before the vaccine. So you use Gripozone after the vaccine and generally start after the third day of vaccine for three to, three to five days. 100 ml is good enough. Okay, for example, today noon time we uh, did the vaccination. Uh, for example, 24 hours or 12 hours later. But, no, uh, uh, better. I, as I said, it, it is uh, it's three days. Three days depend upon the vaccine response because uh, whatever the live vaccines we use, they, they need some time to get incubated and start giving some vaccine reactions. So it, uh, because uh, uh, generally it has been observed that the vaccine reaction starts after five days of, after the vaccine. So we start, uh, recommend to start Gripozone maybe little one or two days before the vaccine reaction starts. So you give vaccine and third day after the vaccine, Gripozone can be given at 100 ml. Uh, yeah, I, I see we are already r running out of the time, but one question, I, very interesting, um, and I want to answer this, uh, which is a better uh, application of Gripozone, drinking water or aerosol? So, uh, th uh, see, this is our recommendation to use. Both applications are good, but uh, generally aerosol application is recommended when the, the cases are more severe, uh, when uh, I would say 20, 30% birds are already stopped eating and drinking, that time you need immediate intervention. So maybe giving Gripozone in those severe cases will not support the birds because birds are not drinking. So in those cases, better to start with aerosol application. Give uh, aerosol application two or three days. When birds start drinking more, then Gripozone can be started through water. Uh, may yeah, I yeah. pass it? Okay, thank you Rütü. Ee, burada başka önemli bir soru daha var dedi. Zamanımız çok kısıtlı kaldı fakat bu soruya da cevap vermek istiyorum dedi Mr. Rütüraj. Ee, nasıl uygulanmalıdır? Yani sprey tarzıyla mı uygularsak daha etkili yoksa içme suyuyla ilgili uygularsak mı daha etkili gibi bir soru gelmiş. Ee, biraz önce de yine benim bahsettiğim gibi eğer gerçekten arkadaşlar çok e, şiddetli hastalık koşullarıyla uğraşıyor iseniz, probleminiz çok yoğunsa e, kesinlikle aerosol sprey tarzıyla uyguladığınızda çok çok daha hızlı et, etki elde edersiniz. Ama koşullar eğer normal gidiyorsa Sadece ne önleyici olarak dediğimiz gibi 10. günden sonra haftada 2 kez ya da aşılamalardan sonra 3-5 gün 100 cc 1000 litre suyu kullanmanız kafidir. Fakat şiddetli durumlarda hiç düşünmenize bile gerek yok. İçme suyu içinde uygulamaya da gerek yok. Direkt aerosol sprey yoluyla uygularsanız çok daha hızlı bir şekilde etki edeceksiniz ve siz de sahada çok daha fazla rahatlayacaksınız. Çünkü sorunlarınız daha kısa sürede bertaraf olacak. Thanks very much, Rütüren. No, just a second. Uh, one question. Uh, no, no. It's important. Okay. Uh, bir, e, değerli bir müşterimiz yine e, su sıcaklığının e, uygulama sırasındaki e, bir etkisi var mı? E, şeklinde bir sorusu var. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello, Rütü. Uh, is the water temperature yeah. important uh, in the application or no? What, what is the question? If water application is... No, uh, water, I, I already answered that. Water temperature is is not uh, having any significance as far as gripozone use because it's it's uh, water temperature might be related with the mixability of the product. If mm -hmm. the product is not mixable well, then sometimes we use this kind of uh, treatments. But for gripozone, you do you can use uh, at even at the room temperature water, no problem. Yeah, okay, thank you. Lütfen. Yeah, so, yeah, and I, I see there are still some questions unanswered uh, in the Q&A box, uh, but uh, we apologize because we need to respect the time for others now. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we could not able to deal with all those questions during the sessions, but we will be more than happy to pick your questions and uh, communications on email. And you can see the email ID on the screen, uh, webinar at ewnutrition.com. And please email your questions to us and we will be happy to answer those.
and uh, you can also join uh, our next sessions uh, we have more webinars coming up in next few weeks if you follow our website or linkedin channels you can keep uh, pick up the new webinar invitations and please register those mm -hmm. and uh, sure. as i mentioned don't forget our feedback questionnaire which is coming up right way uh, and we would welcome your feedback uh, so once again thanks thanks for attending and for your questions the poll will remain uh, for 3 minutes after i close session so stay safe and bye <laughs> Ee, son soru havada kaldı. Hemen onu tekrar cevaplayayım. Bu soru daha önceden de gelmişti. Suyun sıcaklığı ile ilgili hiçbir alakası yok arkadaşlar. Her tür suda gripozon gayet iyi karışan, çok iyi karışabilirlik bir özelliğine sahip olan bir üründür. Bu konuyla ilgili herhangi hiçbir şüpheniz olmasın. Aynı zamanda e, başka sorular da var. Fakat bunları e, sizlerin daha fazla zamanınızı almak istemiyorum dedi Rütraş. Bize webinar at ewnutrition.com'dan ulaşabilirsiniz. Başka sorularınızı istedim tek varzularınızı oradan iletebilirsiniz. En kısa zamanda cevaplandırılacaksınız. Biz e, seminerimizi kapattıktan sonraki 3 dakika boyunca anket formumuz açık kalacak ve sizlerin bizi değerlendirmesi bizlerin eksikliklerimizi görmesi açısından son derece önemli. Kendimizi iyileştirip önümüzdeki seminerler çünkü devam edecek. Daha güzel seminerlerle daha iyi şekilde karşınızda olabilmek için lütfen bu anket formumuzu doldurmanızı rica ediyorum hepinizden. Biz sesini kapattıktan sonra çünkü 3 dakika boyunca anketimiz açık kalacak. Eğer doldurursanız gerçekten çok sevinirim. Hepinize ayrı ayrı çok çok teşekkür ediyorum katılımınızdan dolayı. Bizleri çok mutlu ettiniz. Çok sağ olun. Sağlıcakla kalın. Hoşça kalın. Ben de tüm katılımcılara ve panelistlere teşekkür ediyorum. Umarım mevcut konuyla ilgili farkındalık yaratabilmişiz farkındalık yaratabilmişizdir. Bundan sonraki webinarlarda görüşmek üzere. Sağlıkla kalın.